Sally, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. I am such a fan of Gentleman Jack. I don't think I've seen anything that has just been so interesting on so many levels. But let's go back to the the beginning. Just tell, for for those of our listeners who haven't seen uh, Gentleman Jack, just tell us about Anne Lister and how you discovered her. Well, I grew up in Halifax, so I often visited Shivden Hall as a kid. And um, so I kind of, I've always known about Shivden. And I think I must have always known about Anne Lister because I don't remember when I first heard of her. So I guess it was always there in my childhood knowledge that the Listers has a, a, had on Shivden and the big portrait in the house body was Anne Lister. Um, and as a teenager, I became fascinated by her. I knew there was something transgressive about her. I think I knew that she was gay. Um, I started to, you know, learn by osmosis, because this is well before the days of the internet, that she um, had written this diary that um, was intriguing in some way, shape or form. And I was just intrigued by her, hugely, hugely intrigued by her. I I kind of felt it in my bones that this woman was going to be important in my life somehow. (laughs) Um, And then in um, 1998, I read Jill Liddington's book, Female Fortune, and that was when I got my first really, really clear picture of just who Anne Lister was. And it was, you know, it was transformative. It really changed my life. And I had started to work in TV by then, and it just seemed a bit of a no-brainer to me that this would make a fabulous TV show. And, you know, nearly 20 years later, I I made it happen, uh, which I'm really excited about I, I i look you know there's there are a lot there's a lot to like about Anne Lister. there's a lot to dislike too you know she was a very complex human being but what i find uh intriguing about her is that she and she was a member of polite society but within that polite society she was a real rule breaker you know she was really transgressive and what's fascinating about her i think really is that she she was phenomenally intelligent she was very talented she was physically very capable um, and she was massively optimistic for her life were really was for living and she she just used to grasp life by you know the kahunas and get on with it um in every every situation she's she's a very uplifting person she's a very uplifting influence to have in your life um and i often you know we have this joke on set what would Anne Lister do and it, it really is a very useful phrase to have in your back pocket when things are getting a bit tough you know I think that description that you've just said about her grabbing life and her energy, one of the things that I think comes across so much is just from the opening credits of her sort of getting dressed. And also the other thing, the music is fabulous for the, for the it, opening. Fabulous, I mean, Murray's music is fabulous. And, and the Ohuli and Tito song at the end, it just, it, every time I hear it at the end of the show, it really excites me. Me too. I always like, when I'm watching it, I never skip forward. Like I always want to like hear the music. But the uh, other thing so that the, people... So the, just to say though, the, 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 uh, con- the getting dressed at the beginning, that was a really um, deliberate, thoughtful choice about how this woman constructs herself every day to face the world. You know, in a, in a costume she feels right in that is a, a transgressive costume, but it feels right to her. And it was about her, almost about her constructing her identity in the world. And is that how she would have dressed at the time? Because Anne was, I mean, she's described as sort of, you know, I, I don't know, that the sort of first lesbian. They were obviously lesbians b- before Anne, but tell us how she would have gone about her living as true a life as she could in a time when being a lesbian was very much forbidden and you know we had a very strict society i think again this is it's about her intellect she she was able to she was she was she would have been in a a modern context she would have been a great spin doctor she could run rings around people she could she's she was always one of those very clever people who's three thoughts ahead of anyone else so in any given conversation, she would anticipate what people were going to say all the time. And she could um, really persuade people uh, of anything she wanted to, to persuade to persuade them of. She was very um, good at presenting the world as she saw it to people and, and leaving people thankful that she'd taken the trouble to do that. You know, um, she, she'd, be, she'd be a very per- a difficult person to argue against because she was a great... She was a great conversationalist and she was a great diplomat. You know, she had a very diplomatic manner, a very diplomatic turn of phrase. And I think that's how she really managed to live her life as authentically as she did, because nobody could really call her out on on the, on, on how she conducted herself. And again, to go back to the costume, 
we think it is very much like she dressed we know she dressed in black we know that she um always wore a, a, a pelisse or often wore a pelisse that she describes in the journal i think our costumes are a little bit more expensive than her rather more threadbare <laughs> outfits you know because she wasn't rich i mean she she was landed gentry well she wasn't landed gentry really she was she was more like um she was more like yeomanry which is a, a sort of class that doesn't really exist anymore but she she was never rich she always had to make her estate pay for itself which she was often struggling to do it, you know she she was very hands-on with it she was very active with it but uh she, every day was a a struggle to make ends meet and to continue to expand her um, um her sort of empire but it, it wasn't it wasn't you know she wasn't somebody who was desperately entitled or rich so you know her costume in real life was often uh or, or often a sort of make do and mend affair so um but certainly she dressed very much in her own way you know she in, in the, the pictures we've got of her she not she looks not unlike a curate or a vicar you know it's like she has the long black frock and then the, the the little white collar so i don't know if that allowed her to feel that it was that was kind of a male role that she could yes. sort of adopt well it's interesting you mentioned the male role because you know, when we see Anne Lister's journey through series one and, and we're just beginning series two, she very much takes on the the, the male role of the family. You know, she's looking after mm -hmm. Shibden Hall. And then, of course, she's um, pursuing her relationship with Anne Walker. Mm -hmm. And she's navigating in very much um, a man's world, particularly around the, 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 the coal mine and, and sinking mm -hmm. the pit. I mean, how would she have been regarded on a professional level at that time? I think she was locally, she was well respected. She was, I think she was, it was accepted that she was very singular and that she didn't behave like a woman. And once people kind of got used to that, in the diary, the, the workmen and the tradesmen and people who, the people who sank her mines and that sort of thing, they seemed to have a real respect for her. Um, and I think because she she was able to talk to everyone on their own level, she was very knowledgeable about mining and engineering and geology. So it, I, I think they knew they couldn't pull the wool over the, her eyes and they knew that they could talk to her and that she would understand what was being said and she, she did understand how mining worked. So I think, uh, I think she was locally regarded as an eccentric, but an eccentric who was very popular. I've just been reading about um, her funeral and it says in the newspaper, on reaching the, the church, thousands of people were assembled, assembled to witness the site. And it was with the greatest difficulty the corpse could be got out of the hearse. So thousands of people turned up to witness her body being carried to the church. So wow. that's quite extraordinary. That That's not somebody who is unpopular, is it? No, not at all, not at all. And the other um, question I, I wanted to put to you is that, you know, we're living in this time where we're having big discussions about gender identity and the role of, you know, what is male gender, what is female gender versus biological sex. And mm -hmm. where do you think Anne Lister, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very ridiculous kind of factual kind of question, but she was very much challenging her gender roles back in, in that mm. time. Do you think, you know, she was happy being a woman? Do you think if she was in this time, do you think she may be thought she may be transgender, for example? You can argue it um, all sorts of ways based on the evidence in the journal. She does fantasise about having a penis at various points. Um, and but she also talks about liking being a woman because it gives her more access to other women than traditionally men would have had at that time. So um, she was very masculine, um, and uh, I, I I I don't discount any thoughts that she would have been transgender. But I, I think she also liked what giving a woman gave her as well. In in a line from the new series. Um, I, I have got a saying, um, if I were a man, which I have a thousand reasons to thank heaven and providence, I'm not. Um, but she's kind of just making a dig at men, I think, in that line. Um, so I think it's a really intriguing question and, and one that 
you know you could write theses on so yeah. I, it's, it's, it's very hard to answer i don't have any strident convictions either way you know it's, we've just had the um, inaugural meeting of the analista society in halifax and we had some really brilliant learned papers from scholars from all over the world and um, it's it's the kind of thing I'd, I'd love to hear them debate. Well, I'm sure it will be something debated. And of course, she has spawned, as you say, just this, just legions of of, of fans. And I actually, last time I did uh, question time in person, it was at, ha at Halifax. Oh, right. And yeah, and I, was, I was saying, oh my goodness, Anne Lister. And there were all these other people saying, you've got to do the Anne Lister too. It's really put Halifax on the map, hasn't it? But the, there's been a lot of, um footfall as they call it uh since gentleman jack went out we've just as i said we just had the first analyst of birthday weekend festival which was organized partly by the fans and partly by calderdale council which incorporated the analyst of society inaugural meeting and it was attended by thousands of people and um yeah i mean she it, it you know it's um it's it, it has had an impact on tourism in halifax there's no there's no two ways about it and it's put her on the global stage, which is what she absolutely deserves. You know, uh, as I said, the, the, the scholars who are now coming to Anlister, um, a friend of mine is uh, Professor Laurie Shannon, who's a, um, a professor of English literature, and she absolutely believes that Anne is a, a giant of English literature. And, you know, we're in this unique situation that somebody who lived and wrote 200 years ago is just about to take their place in the canon of lit English literature. You know, isn't that extraordinary? It, it is absolutely extraordinary and it's it's so amazing that that you and the whole team have have helped you know shine this this light on her and you know the the casting is brilliant the filming's brilliant you know and Saran Jones <laughs> is just was she your first choice um it not exactly um, but she wasn't not my first choice I, I, I wrote the first three episodes of series one blind because I could not see who could be Anne Lister. I could not see who could embody all this stuff. And I, I obviously I've worked with Saran a lot. And why I, my mind didn't go to her was, I think, because I just thought she was modern. You know, she's very contemporary. She does very contemporary stuff. She's not got a period face. And, you know, in the end, that kind of is what kind of what's made it. You know, the fact that she is like she's come from another planet almost. <laughs> With a you know with her energy and a modern oh, and can we just say the striding? <laughs> I know. I mean, it is amazing. I, you know, it, I can't imagine now anyone else actually being able to do what she does. Um, you know, I've just watched episode eight last night because we're still working on post production on the final episode, and it's it's breathtaking what she does. It's breathtaking the um, the the variety of emotions and. Uh, stuff that she can convey you know she you know it's, it, at moments it's hilariously funny and at others it's um a real tearjerker and she can she just with apparent effortlessness i know it's not effortless but it, it appears effortless as it should with a great actor you know uh, she just conveys this extraordinary wealth of stuff it's she is she is really really extraordinary I think. Oh, well, Sally, I'm so excited about watching season um, two. Um, it is the most brilliant story. Anne Lister is the most amazing character. The cast is brilliant. The, the, the backdrop is brilliant. The script is brilliant. I have to say, I'm slightly in love with Anne Lister. I think we've all, we're all <laughs> like slightly like just, we're all just like, we all would love to fall. We all just love Anne Lister. We'd all love Anne Lister. Are you, are you in, in love with her or you want to be her? You know, yes, cool. yes. Or both, yeah. Yeah, both. I think it's both. <laughs> but I think we can conclude this interview with the uh, very important words, what would Anne Lister do? I think that is, the, that is the rules by which we have to now live our life. Well, Sally, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you and, and congratulations on just a stunning, stunning programme. Oh, thank you very much.